Folks, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, one Jeff Beck. You know, there's an individual that almost any guitar player will cite as like uh, at the Mount Olympus of, of guitar players, uh, no matter what, if they're shredders, if they're country, blues, jazz, whatever, they always go, Jeff Beck. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because he just is one, you know, arguably, I'm not going to say absolutely, but of the guitar players of the 60s generation, he's the one that has kept on advancing and continues to advance to this very day. I don't know what the reason is. A lot of guys were like, hey, you know what? I made it on the, these things. This is what I do, and that's it, which is fine. But Beck has been, I'm not satisfied. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to redefine myself and just keep on going. And he always has, and it's always been a joy to watch and experience. I remember one time... Uh, Back in 1998, as a matter of fact, uh, was that the first time I saw Jeff live? It may have been. Uh, and I, someone was leaving. I had tickets to this particular gig. It was in Milwaukee, and I was kind of back a bit and was enjoying the show. And then this couple came up to me, and they were fans of my band. And they're like, look, our babysitter just called. we got to go, but we got tickets right up front. We'd love for you to just take our seats because we have to leave. I'm like, awesome. So I went up, and I watched Jeff up close and personal. And it was one of the best guitar lessons I've ever had. In terms of uh, what I love about guitar playing, to me, um, is just using the instrument itself to make fun sounds and express yourself in new ways that are not the typical or not the norm. And then collecting all this little grab bag of these little secret tools of destruction. Um, you know, whether it be harmonics or a different way of, uh, of playing with the slide. He played the slide with his right hand. He was doing melodies down here. He was doing all this, this stuff. It was crazy. But I had been a fan from the get-go. When I was in high school, um, you know, I kind of looked at the Yardbirds guitar players as, you know, in, there was, of course, the fascination with the English players because you had, you know, John Mayles Blues Breakers. There was Clapton, there was Peter Green, and there were Mick Taylor. They were all awesome. They all had massive careers and create, created great music beyond John Mayle. And then you had the Yardbirds. You had Clapton, you had Jeff Beck, and you had Jimmy Page. Um, my favorite Jeff Beck record uh, early on was Truth. I had that record. I'd listened to it over and over again. But there was things that Jeff would do that were like, you know, he would do, like do these bends that were slightly out of tune. And at first it kind of drove me nuts. And then I made an entire career out of it. <laughs> and he would just kind of take it so instead of like a he'd be like you know what I mean? that. Uh, and then he played some great slide stuff. And then, of course, I started getting into the records he did um, in the 70s, you know, the instrumental kind of fusion records. And they were cool, but there were certain things that he would do that I just kind of latched onto because they were not, uh, they were not jazz, for, per se, and they were rock influenced, but they were just kind of unusual things. Like if I was in the key of G, he would do like... Ben right there just killed me. I was like, what is it? And then he was not afraid to use pinch harmonics. And of course, I love pinch harmonics. And he would do them to great effect, you know. And he would bend strings in weird ways. So for me, a lot of the times it was what he did in a um, very much influenced by old rockabilly stuff, certainly by Les Paul. But then he listened to the blues stuff, and uh, he was very much imbued in the world of blues. So when he would do solos, a lot of times he would be more cognizant of the chord changes than maybe some of the other English contemporaries of his that were just more like blues guys that would, you know, they would accentuate the chords changes every now and again, but they were more or less people that kind of stuck into that minor pentatonic blues land, uh, which is nothing wrong with it. It's you know, obviously highly effective. But Beck would kind of play over the changes a little bit more and always did the unpredictable. 
I remember uh, when I was in high school, I got two big records. Uh, well, there and back was one of them. Actually, I always t say I actually learned chicken picking. Of course, it, you know, Mark Knopfler was one of them. But Jeff Beck did something on a tune uh, on the record there and back where he was going. He was doing that. Bah, 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 I was like, what is that? And I figured that out from Jeff Beck. <laughs> It's the idea of, you know, putting my finger down on the D string with my first finger on the right hand, putting the thumb on the same string and just kind of plucking with my thumb and then having that first finger behind it and then popping up afterward. The other thing is that he would do stuff with harmonics that killed me. You know what I mean? He would do a... And of course, then there's the whole whammy bar thing. So, a couple key things I remember when I, again, when I was in high school, very formative years, high school. You're playing guitar all the time. You're really into it. You're like, what is life going to be like as I get better on the guitar? And yada, yada, yada. And there was a show on very briefly in like 1983. It was called Rock and Roll Tonight. There was a house band. There would be a guest MC, some musician. And then they would put together unlikely people to play together. And one particular night, it was the house band. Billy Squire was the MC. And then the two guys that were coming on to play together were Jeff Beck and Les Paul. And Jeff Beck came on playing like, a, it looked like a 57 Strat. And he was just going through a twin and like some kind of rack effect to give him some kind of a slapback sound. And they just did basically blues song, which I was really looking forward to because there's something about the way that Beck plays over just like a 12 bar blues that is killer because he's going to do the unexpected. Uh, but he did all kinds of, I mean, <laughs> all this kind of stuff playing over this G blues and it absolutely killed me and as he's playing Les Paul reaches over and he tries to unplug Jeff's guitar because he's just annihilating, right? Uh, I remember that quite specifically. Um, and then um, I remember, of course, the ARMS concert that happened uh, later on that year. So ARMS was uh, a concert with Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, and uh, Eric Clapton. And Beck played on there and did a set of stuff that was very much from that there and back era. Uh, and again, just to see him doing all of his stuff uh, and then playing with Clapton and Page over more, you know, uh, rootsy kind of soundscapes. It just was freaking awesome. And then later on, of course, when he gets into the guitar shop era, that's kind of getting into his new phase of doing even more emotive uh, new things that he learned uh, with the whammy bar and getting kind of a slightly different tone. A lot of times when he would do the whammy bar stuff, you know, he would just do like... Or do like... It's almost like he's trying to sound either like a harmonica or like a slide guitar. And the idea of going up with the whammy bar. Right? Or, or the idea of doing these, I, I call them warbles, people call them different things, but you know, I did this thing where I kind of, kind of got it from Jeff, where I'll bend a note and just kind of flick the whammy bar. And you can hear those springs of it. Or sometimes I'll just have my palm on the bridge of the guitar. <laughs> Again, those little sly little things that he would do are just kind of like... All that kind of stuff, almost sounding like a East Indian instrument, like a sitar or something, or a vocalist from that school of music. So anyways, Jeff Beck, huge influence. But it's one of those things with Jeffrey is that I played Strat for a lot of years, and I still play Strat, obviously. But I switched to uh, doing most of my stuff on a telly type of format because it's so it, Jeff's flavor is so unique and such a strong flavor that if you mess around too much, it sounds just so much like him. So I have a tendency not to do a ton of whammy bar stuff, 
only because it's impossible not to sound like him because he's just such a potent force in that world. Anyways, you get the idea. That's a little loving in my direction towards the great Jeff Beck. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, years ago I did a record called Defenestrator, and there was a tune on there I called The Grip. And then years later, I had a record out on Favored Nations that was a kind of a compilation of a bunch of stuff I'd done before, as well as some new tracks. And that record was called The Grip. But this tune, The Grip, was kind of a maniacal, kind of a Beckian, Hendrixian, at the, at the hoedown type of vibe. So let's hear it. Let's check it out, and then we'll talk about it. Let's talk a little bit about this grip tune. First of all, tone-wise, uh, I'm on the bridge pickup of the Strat, and uh, on my signature caulk amplifier, there's an overdrive channel, overdrive boost, and there's this OTS circuit. I think on the, which I add on top of that, which gives, so here's the, this is clean, overdrive, overdrive gain, and then OTS. which almost sounds like a fuzz. And that's what I used on the original recording. I believed I used, a, uh, I used this guitar. I remember that. Although at the time I had lace sensor pickups. That's how long ago that was. Uh, it was this guitar. I was using a color sound tone bender, the, the silver one with the orange writing on it, uh, into a plexi. Uh, it was 100 watt with two of the outside tubes taken out uh, into an old uh, JTM 45 412 cabinet that actually won in the Marshall Bluesbreaker Guitar Showdown. But that's another story. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to back to the grip. So the grip was just that we recorded it live in the studio, and um, it was one of these things where I just had this, this riff. It was kind of, again, the idea was kind of like Jeff Beck and Hendrix at the hoedown type of a thing. Uh, so it's, it's basically a mutated blues in, in E. So the first thing... <laughs> So what I'm doing with that, I'm using my pick on the E string, middle finger on the D string. And I might, you know, put my palm on the bridge to get a little. And then I go to the, the, the A, I go to the four chord. Sometimes they're like, oh, oh, I like doing that bend. So I'm bending the G string there at the fourth fret, and then I'm hitting a pinch harmonic by raking down. Again, the pick is pretty well, it's barely, it's pretty well concealed. Just a little bit of it showing. So as soon as I rake down, I'm hitting uh, the fat part of my thumb to get it. I 
just like the sound of this because it's the idea of taking a G7, but I use my thumb on the E string. Uh, I kind of use my pinky, I guess, on the, uh, on the G string note there at the fourth fret. And I do this little hammer on there. Okay, it gives it a... That same thing again okay so i'm doing this g7 where i've got my thumb on the low e string i got my pinky on the g string there at the fourth fret and i'm using my first and second fingers to get this hammer on. so i'm using my pick on the e string my middle finger on the d string and my ring finger on the g string i'm gonna go up to a the same thing And then I do a slightly different variation on that first lick. So I've got the third of the E7, the third and seven. Oh. And then I go to the A and I do the same thing. Again, using my palm on the bridge and the pick is hitting the low notes and I'm hybrid picking the top part. And then back up. Right? I love doing these sixths where I'll play that interval and then I'll do a pull off on the open string of the top note. Okay. I go into that second part where I'm doing these octaves. It goes to the four chord and I'm just doing these tritone fifths like And then I bend into the G. Up to the A. This harmonic trick and I don't know where I first heard this you know metal guys have done this stuff all the time but I again I, I didn't really grow up listening to a bunch of metal guys so I think the first time I heard this trick like, I think I heard it on a traveling Wilbury song and then of course I saw Jeff Beck doing this stuff when I saw him close up and personal at that gig I told you about so it's the idea I'm just hitting hammer on and pull offs with my left hand and I'm using uh, my thumb to find pitches down here to correspond with the, the blues notes that are the, the blues progression, right? So in E, I'm going. Four chord. I started off that solo with this octave thing, which I like. This idea of just going, you know, hammering on. That kind of little octave thing with just a little bit of wiggles on it, that's a Jeff Beck thing. doing that kind of a thing where I'll go, I'll bend a note, and then with my left hand, grab the G-string and ping it, and then go down with the wind arm. <laughs> Another thing to do like... I 
I do this. I like to do this like every now and again, and it's very, very disturbing. So I bend it up, and it's like a, it's like a, a, a minor second away. <laughs> Anyways, those are some of the ideas I did in the solo. It's random and different every time, uh, but those were some of the major elements. So I hope you enjoyed it. That was a look at the grip, which is kind of, is my, kind of my shout out to the mightiest of the mighty, Jeffrey Beckery.